Hi. Well, this month on Pace Pilates with Lisa Online, it's all about your fascial health. Why do we care about fascia? Well, we've learned a lot in the last several decades about the human body, and we're not several hundred different muscles. We are one fascial system that pockets and houses all of our muscles and gives them the abilities to move us well. So the fascia doesn't just cover your muscles, it covers your bones, your vessels, your nerves, your organs, and in concentrated amounts, even makes up your ligaments and tendons. Keeping your fascia healthy is a way to keep your entire body healthy and feeling younger with range of motion, lack of stiffness, good muscle strength, balance, and most importantly, stay away from injuries and pain. So good, healthy fascia has properties to it. Fascia is made up of collagen and elastin fibers, water, cells, and an intracellular substance that's full of fluid. And when it's healthy, those collagen and elastin fibers are in a nice uniform crimping cross patterning lattice work like this netting here. It looks very much like this on a microscopic level. And this is what gives our fascia its properties to load and tense and give us power and be elastic. And so nice healthy fascia like that is very uniform and functions well in those collagen fibers. But when it gets unhealthy, the collagen fibers get irregularly patterned and random and bunched up and more glued down. This is what causes strain and injury and pain in our bodies and loss of mobility and range of motion. So you wanna keep your fascia healthy through your whole life and that can be done because there are six major factors that affect our fascial health. And I'm gonna talk about all of them. There's only one you can't change. We'll talk about that one last. So let's talk about the five factors that you can change to make your fascia healthy. All right, the first one is hydration. Fascia relies on hydration for that intracellular substance that's full of fluid to give it its properties to be bouncing back and elastic and loading and tensing for motion. And it's like a sponge. When a sponge lacks moisture, it gets dry and brittle. It doesn't work anymore. Same thing with our fascia. It needs to be juicy. So you've got to keep yourself really well hydrated for healthy fascia. A good way to do this Take your body weight in pounds, divide that number in half, and go for that many ounces of water a day. Or other types of beverages that are non -decaf that are, don't have caffeine, they're undecaffeinated like herbal teas, and getting more fruits and vegetables in your diet will also make you more naturally hydrated versus more processed foods, grains, and things like that. So, take care of your hydration this week. The second way we keep our fascia healthy is through our nutrition the way we eat. So certain foods give the nutrients to the fascia to keep those collagen and elastin fibers regenerating, rebuilding, and staying nice and young and healthy. And that comes from good plant foods with the right uh, substances in them, the phytochemicals that the co collagen can use to rebuild. So especially things like vitamin C, fruits and vegetables of red, yellow, orange color are great for your fascia and for the blood flow we need to it. And also getting enough protein for your activity level is really important for the fibers in your fascia. So you can get it from vegetarian sources or if you're eating animal sources of protein, make them healthy by using organic chicken and fish, grass-fed meats, pasture-raised eggs. And then watching your electrolyte balance, getting enough potassium, again, from fruits and vegetables, especially leafy greens. So clean up your diet this week of toxins. That's gonna to be found in more processed foods, chemicals, additives, and more ingredients you can't pronounce. Try to go for more whole foods, fruits and vegetables, healthy proteins, and stay away from the processed foods. Clean up your diet and you'll clean up your fascia. The third way we keep our fascia healthy is actually through mental and emotional health and wellness. The fascia actually has 10 times the sensory nerve endings 
than your muscles. It's astounding. The nervous system is always talking to our physical body through our fascia, and that's wonderful. It gives us our property called proprioception. And this is where our body has the ability to be aware of where we are in space all the time, balance our ourselves against gravity, and move fluidly and with a lot of mobility and coordination. But anything that affects your nervous system will also affect your fascial health over time. If you're spending a lot of time unnecessarily in the stress response of the nervous system, sometimes called fight or flight or sympathetic nervous system activity, then you want to watch that and make changes where you can. Are you getting too much information overload on your brain from too much time looking at media or online or using your phone too much? Do you not have enough downtime in your life and you're maybe overscheduled or overworked? And then we also all have difficult emotions from time to time, that's normal. But thought and emotional habits also affect your nervous system in the greatest amount. So being aware of your thoughts whenever you can and reframing things and redirecting yourself to healthier emotions like hope or gratitude acceptance or the big one trust which always helps to make your mind and body feel safer and brings that nervous system from that sympathetic nervous system activity to parasympathetic naturally great for your fascia to keep that nervous system balanced okay what's the fourth way well, the fourth way we keep our fascia healthy is my favorite. It's by taking care of the structure and shape and movement patterns and habits of your body. All right. What do I mean by structure and shape of the body? Well, mainly if there's any excessive body weight that's causing fascial strain or any postural or positioning imbalances in your body that have become sustained misalignment over time. Both of those things will cause biomechanical pulls and strains in your fascia that over time cause the injury. Doesn't matter if you're short and tight in certain parts of the fascia or long and weak. The same injury results from both. So, this month on my website, Pace Pilates with Lisa, you can start some corrective exercise videos to start bringing that postural balance right back into even fascia, fascial tension all through your body. That's why I love corrective exercise and I teach it on my videos. So at home, you can use these programs to keep your body corrected and in great alignment but also your movement patterns in general and the types of movement you do in your life also helps to keep your fascial system even in tension and healthy. Especially if you're in a sport or an occupation where you're using your body repetitive, repetitively in the same way over and over again. You wanna keep a lot of good balanced, healthy, natural motion in your life balanced with good rest. This is another thing you can find right here on my website. These Pilates-based workouts I program for people to use are specifically designed where the muscle groups and fascial lines of the body on front, back, lateral, and rotational lines are all worked evenly to reduce strain and unnecessary tension anywhere in the fascial system. And if you don't like Pilates-based work, that's okay. Try yoga, martial arts, or dance. But anything that's as unstandardized as possible and natural human motion to keep yourself balanced. Okay, what is the fifth way we can stay healthy in our fascia? That's manual therapy on your body, like massage. Anything that manipulates the fascia manually can help it stay away from that glued down injury and stay nice and uniform in its integrity so you feel better and it's working for you better. So a great way to do this is get massage or work with a therapist on fascial stretch therapy. But if you can't do those things, foam roller massage on yourself works just as well to knead out that fascia, compress it, and keep it healthy and uniform. And this month, 
on Pace Pilates with Lisa, you'll find a full body foam roller massage that I've put out this month as a video that you can follow anytime at home on your own. And it feels so good. And remember, because it's so related to your nervous system, the more you relax and lengthen out, and even out that fascia, the more your mind and body relax as well. So what's the sixth factor that affects our fascial health that you can't change? Your age. But that's okay. Even though you can't change your age, you can keep your fascia younger than your age and healthy through all the ways we've already talked about. So this week, you want to keep your nutrition up. You want to keep your hydration up. Think about your mental and emotional wellness. And then get on Pace Pilates with Lisa online, especially if you haven't subscribed yet and start trying some corrective exercise videos, some really great Pilates-based workouts that work you evenly, and a full body foam roller massage, all to take care of your fascia, make it younger and healthier. You'll feel loose, less stiff, more range of motion, joint freedom, younger. You can do it. I look forward to seeing you in your first video. Talk to you soon.